Hi, this is Tom with Heritage Electrical and in this video, let's give you a bit of an overview of what's involved when we come out to do a condition report on your electrical installation. So at this property, we've installed a new board and we've also got this existing board. Now the new board uh, is located in the cellar. We're not looking at that today, but you can see uh, there's an isolator for it and the tails go down into the cellar. Um, the existing board, we have moved a few circuits around, we've neatened the board up a little bit, so we're just doing a few tests today to make sure that everything is safe. So you can see there's not too many circuits in this board. We've got a surge protection device, we've got the, the red colour on the main switch, uh, we've got each circuit, apart from the car charger, protected with RCBOs. So this is probably going to take us the best part of the day to do a thorough job. So first really important piece of information that we're going to need to know, how is your electrical installation connected to earth? Now this particular installation is what we call a TNS, it's a slightly older means of earthing. And what you're seeing here is me just making sure that your electrical installation is connected to earth, i.e. the transformer back at the end of your street. Now this is really important, vital for the safety of your installation. If there's any sort of fault to earth, current starts flowing to earth, we need to make sure that your installation is connected to earth. So this is me doing a test and yep, proving that we've got a good connection to earth there. So we're gonna note that down on the test sheet and that's what we call the ZE, the external earth fault loop impedance. So what we've got here is a ring final circuit which will be providing power for sockets, maybe upstairs or downstairs. And each of these conductors, so the browns, the blues and the green and yellows, they should be a ring. So we take a resistance measurement. Now, in this case, unfortunately, there's no reading for the neutral, which means there's a break in the ring somewhere. So we're going to have to go and find where that problem is in the installation and rectify that uh, for that ring circuit to be safe. Next up, I'm just showing you the start of testing the lighting circuit. So I'm doing what's called the R1, R2 method here, which is where we temporarily connect the earth and the red live conductor together. Obviously there's no power flowing at the moment. What this means is that I can then go to every light fitting and I can get a reading of the resistance and I can prove that that um, circuit has a connection back to earth. Now sometimes when you've got dimmers, you can see this a couple of dimmer modules in your installation, we need to remove those and temporarily link out some cables, otherwise we can get a false reading when we're doing these resistance measurements. I can then go and drop the light fittings in this room and get an accurate measurement uh, we've got another ring final circuit here. You can see two reds, two blacks, and two earth cables. And this time it was. Uh, we were getting some decent readings for live neutral and CPC. Now what we then need to do is, is go off out into the installation and take a measurement for the R1, R2 reading. And just doing a rough calculation on my phone to see what sort of values I should be expecting from my meter when I go out into the installation. So this is me testing the resistance at one of the sockets. Sometimes older sockets, they just need plugging in, plugging out, plugging in again. Get some of the gunk off the contacts and you can see that, that was 0.45, which is spot on. Let's just go to another socket. Plug that in. And now this time you can see we've got a higher reading. Um, that could be because it's an old socket. Could be loose connections in the back. It could be that it's a spur, but we need to sort of investigate that further because that's higher than it should be. Now, I'll just quickly show you another of the tests that we do. This is called insulation resistance. Um, and this is a good indicator of the 
uh, condition of the insulation of the wiring in your installation. So anything over one mega ohm is a pass, one million ohms. You can see in this case, the uh, this particular circuit is far exceeding that value. So that's a, a pass with flying colors. So this uh, wiring should be good for a good while longer. Now what we have to do is we have to test uh, using a like a stress voltage of 500 volts between live and neutral, live and earth, and neutral and earth to make sure that there's no damage on that cable anywhere. And in each case you can see here that it's passing with flying colors. Now you notice I'm doing two tests there, one at 250 volts and one at 500 volts. Um, what I like to do is just make sure that um, I haven't missed anything left anything in circuit so things like computers plugged in delicate electricals because this test can potentially uh, fry delicate electronics so I like to do a test at a lower voltage first and then test at a higher voltage once I'm sure that there's nothing been left in the circuit so bear in mind that um, this is just a really quick overview of some of the tests I'm not showing you all of the tests that we do here and if you remember that these tests are required for each circuit and if we don't have comprehensive test records available we will need to test uh, every accessory socket luminaire or lighting point etc so that's why this uh, particular installation is taking us the best part of the day to sort out so you can see here that uh, the types of information that we record for each individual circuit, type of breaker that has been used, the cross-sectional area of the wires that's been used or the cabling, maximum permitted ZS and whether the, this particular circuit adheres to that, you know, passes or fails. Um, we would test to make sure that the RCD component of the RCBO is tripping in the correct time. So that's me just setting up my meter for uh, an RCD test. 